Could be a stormy drive home for a lot of folks tonight on 4 Live Radar. No warnings yet, but the severe potential is out there. We'll continue to track it. Karen? Also, a war of words is heating up between President Trump and a group of women in Congress. Take a listen. These are people that, in my opinion, hate our country. The president targeting Michigan Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. You'll hear from her as well. Paula. Well, some very big changes coming in terms of expectations for students and parents in one local school district. We'll give you a look inside the new student code of conduct. These stories and more are happening right now on Local 4 First at 4. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at four, high summer heat is making life very uncomfortable and could spark some afternoon storms. Today is an ozone action day. Also, cooling centers are opening to help people deal with the heat. Places like Westland and Washtenaw County. Now, we'll keep a list of cooling centers as they open on clickondetroit.com. But first, let's get the very latest from Ben Bailey. Yeah, Karen, highs in the upper 80s today. That's going to seem actually cool compared to what we've got later in the forecast. But first on the plate are these thunderstorms on four live radar. And you can see there's quite a bit of rain in here, a lot of lightning. But as of right now, these storms not severe. So we're tracking one batch there across the state line headed towards the lake. For the most part, these are staying north of 69, uh, but we'll likely see some develop even south of there. So just about everybody under that threat for the rest of the afternoon and evening. And that's why that severe risk is marginal for this entire side of the state. Remember, that's the lowest form, lowest category there in the scale. As we mentioned, the air quality alert still in effect for the rest of today. So just take it easy. Keep the mowers in the shed and wait for another day uh, to be outside and exert yourself. Temperatures sliding into the low 80s tonight, but that humidity is only going up. We'll look at our first heat wave of the season coming up here in a few minutes, Karen. Right. The county where the search continues for a missing child. Take a look. This is two year old Gabrielle Vitale. She went missing up northwest of M33 on Reber Road in Commons Township. Family members are from the Monroe area. And they were preparing to leave this morning when they lost track of little Gabrielle. Deputies and troopers, including canine teams and the MSP helicopter, have been searching the area. If you happen to have any information, please contact Michigan State Police. Two men have been charged in connection with the brutal murder of a gay man who prosecutors say they met on Facebook. It happened last month on Leander Street on Detroit's east side. Prosecutors say Darnell Wilson and Anthony Bronk decided to meet up with the victim, Deano Johnson, after meeting online. They say the men locked Johnson in the trunk of his car and then shot him multiple times. Both men are also accused of burning his car. Detroit police say a man is hospitalized after he's attacked by three dogs with the owner standing by. This happened just after midnight on Warwick Street near Schoolcraft. Right now, it's not clear what set off the attack. Afterward, a witness took the man to the hospital where he's dealing with serious injuries. Detroit police and animal control are investigating, but haven't been able to reach the dog owner. Meantime, the dogs have not been impounded yet. With a ceremonial handshake in the books, the UAW kicks off major contract negotiations with the big three automakers. Today, the UAW kicked things off with Ford. Marathon negotiations will continue with Fiat, Chrysler, and GM. Ford says it expects disagreements but is hopeful they can make a deal. The UAW is threatening to strike if demands aren't met. We're going to have some you know, tough issues. We always do. We're going to have disagreements. We always do. But in the end, we always try and do what's right for our company. Um, and, uh, and, and in that spirit, uh, I expect that to happen again this time. So I'm here today to say loud and clear, with this year's negotiations, we will halt the race to the bottom. We will protect our work, our jobs, and our way of life. We expect an agreement that recognizes our contribution to the profitability and looks ahead to Ford Motor Company for a very prosperous future. Now, there are many key issues on the bargaining table that affect thousands of employees. At 5, business editor Rob Maloney will break down what each side is trying to accomplish this time around. The war of war words between President Trump and four congresswomen of color is escalating this afternoon, one day after tweeting that congresswomen, including Detroit's Rashida Tlaib, should go back to the countries they came from. The president added to his attack today. He tweeted again, writing, quote, 
When will the radical left congresswoman apologize to our country, the people of Israel, and even to the office of the president for the foul language they have used and the terrible things they have said? Now, there is more to come this afternoon. Kimberly Gill tracking the latest. And Kim, the president is not backing down at all. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. No, he's not. The president, as you mentioned, continued his criticism at an event this afternoon. Meanwhile, the Congresswomen are fighting back with their own tweets and on camera as well. Detroit Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib sent out this video message. Listen. I want you to know that you belong, that this is our country, and no amount of hate-filled bullying from the White House is going to change that. We're going to fight back together, and we're going to become stronger for it. Now, it is believed the president is targeting four progressive lawmakers, a Representative Ilhan Omar of Minnesota, Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts, Tlaib and Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez of New York. All four are U.S. citizens. Three were born here, and Omar has been a citizen since the year 2000. This afternoon, the president repeated his belief that if they're unhappy with the United States, they should leave the country. That's what I said in a tweet, which I guess some people think is controversial. A lot of people love it, by the way. A lot of people love it. But if you're not happy in the U.S., if you're complaining all the time, very simply, you can leave. You can leave right now. Come back if you want. Don't come back. It's okay, too. But if you're not happy, you can leave. And we also have new reaction from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She says the president's Sunday tweet went beyond his own low standards and cannot stand without rebuttal. Pelosi will ask the House of Representatives to vote on a resolution condemning those tweets. So, Karen, much more to talk about here. Our coverage will continue at 5 and 6. For now, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. We'll see you at 5. Meantime, two of Jeffrey Epstein's accusers asked a federal judge to keep the billionaire behind bars. That happened at a hearing today. Prosecutors used their testimony to convince the judge that Epstein does not deserve bail. One woman called him a, quote, scary person to have walking the streets. Epstein's attorneys offered $77 million in collateral to have him released under house arrest. Right now, the judge says he'll make his decision on Thursday with Epstein behind bars until then. Singer R. Kelly also remi remains behind bars. His bail hearing in Chicago has been postponed. Federal judges are meeting in Chicago to determine how separate indictments out of Chicago and New York will be handled. Kelly was arrested again last week on a new 13-count indictment that includes sex crimes and obstruction of justice. Right, good morning. Mr. Kelly, Kelly is expected in court here, tomorrow. Sir. Thank you. School's out for summer, but we could see some big changes in the code of conduct for Detroit public schools. The district is considering changes to how it disciplines students, and there could be a change when it comes to wearing shorts to class. Local force Paula Topman takes a look at the proposals being considered this week. Paula, what's going on here? Well, lots of changes. This is a really big document. We're talking about 52 pages, lots of red ink, so it includes all of these changes. Uh, about 10, maybe 12 pages devoted to discipline alone. And what's so interesting is that there are so many students who haven't even seen this document, and perhaps therein lies the difference. Because most students don't even read the code of conduct. How many of you have ever read the Code of Conduct? I haven't. I, I haven't. haven't. You've never even read it? No. <laughs> Some of the proposed changes and the first thing that greets parents and students in the booklet, a focus on respect and civility branded Expect Respect. Monthly, the principles of respect and civility will be proactively worked into the lives of both students and parents. So there's going to be assemblies, there's going to be awareness sessions and workshops. Um, there's going to be posters, there's going to be a pledge card. There's going to be an emphasis on um, putting these character traits into social media. For three rising juniors in the district, the idea of a code of conduct that will be intentionally instructed throughout the year, more than a massive online placeholder, is actually welcome. If we have more rules that are being like taught inside of school, not just like on a piece of paper that nobody ever going to read, I feel like if it's being taught inside of school, it would be a little bit better. Shorts have actually been added to the uniform-like dress code, but not any old shorts. We don't mean short shorts. Students are not allowed to wear short shorts because they're not in a compliance with the dress code. We're talking about the Bermuda-style shorts that usually go down to the knee. They're usually in khaki, blue, and black. 
The students we talk to think hard directives on dress code are needed, where common sense may often be lacking. Girls are too fast. They want to wear their shorts like real short where their booty be out. It attracts certain attention people it's not know I'm looking for. Also new this year, a point system to inform protocol for discipline. Uniformity, kind of a demerit add-on system designed to keep students in school and correct their behavior rather than booting them out for infractions that don't threaten long-term school safety. Students will have that opportunity to go through this positive behavior intervention, but they'll also understand that on the third offense, they're going to get referred to that alternative school. So this proposal has already made it through a couple of committees. Big questions on the list had to do with those shorts. Perhaps they've been answered. We'll find out tomorrow when the board votes on whether or not to accept this proposal. But interesting takeaway, Karen, is that civility is going to be intentionally and proactively taught to students, parents, and teachers. I think everyone would agree that would be a great addition. All right, well, it'll be interesting to see how they vote. Keep us updated, Paula. Still head. It is one of those luxury stores that's become a part of our pop culture. But is the famous store headed for bankruptcy? And speaking of shopping, Hank's here. Hey, Karen, it is Prime Day, and we are revealing the biggest deals on Amazon right now and showing you how to save even more. That story right after the break.